Hi, welcome to Cooper and Hunter. Today we're going to go over some error codes. The error code will show on the front of your unit. For a simulation, I have it here already. If your indoor unit is displaying an E3 error code, that indicates an indoor fan motor malfunction. First, I would verify that the filters and coils are both clean. Then, I would open up the unit and make sure the blower wheel is also clean. If that doesn't resolve the issue, I would first check to make sure that the fan motor is properly seated into the connection point. Then, I would check resistance values on the motor itself. If your indoor unit is flashing 88, it could be one of two things. It could be the main control board or the fan motor. In the main control board, you would check at the terminal power and resistance. And if it's the fan motor, it could either be jammed or a faulty motor. If your unit is showing a solid non-flashing 88, it's one of two things. Either the connection point to the indoor main control board is not seated properly, or the Wi-Fi dongle adapter is not seated properly onto the display board. If your indoor unit is displaying an E1 error code, that indicates communication error. What I would check first is to make sure that at the terminal, your connections match your outdoor terminal. In this case, it's white, black, red. If your connections are correct and they match, then that would indicate there's a short on either your outdoor unit or your indoor head. Here we have a multi-zone system. We have three evaporators connected to one outdoor condenser. As you can see, there is a dash dash error code on two of these units. A dash dash error code indicates mode conflicts. It's important to know that because all three evaporators are connected to one condensing unit, they all have to be set to the same function, whether it be heating or cooling. It's also worthwhile to know because of this, you cannot set your units to auto because if one room is colder and the other room is hotter, that's also going to cause the mode conflict. To resolve this issue, just set all the units to the same mode. If your indoor unit is displaying an E4 or E5 error code, that indicates an indoor pipe temperature sensor or room temperature sensor malfunction. To troubleshoot, first I will locate the pipe temperature sensor, which looks like this. I want to make sure it's properly connected. Then I will check resistance between the two pins. To troubleshoot the E5 error code, I would locate the room temperature sensor, which is usually in the tubing. Also make sure it's seated properly like the other one, and check resistance on the sensor as well. If your indoor unit is displaying an EE error code, that indicates a water level float switch malfunction. First I would make sure your drain hose is not clogged. Then I would make sure that the float switch is not jammed in an upright position. If none of these are the case, then I'll just check continuity. If there is continuity, that's good. If there's no continuity, that's bad. If your indoor unit is displaying an FO error code, that indicates overvoltage. If your unit is displaying a P1 error code, that indicates overvoltage or undervoltage. To troubleshoot these issues, first thing I would do is check voltage coming into the unit. I would check each lane to ground and then each lane to each other. If your power is correct, I would start checking the boards to see if there's any shorts on them. If your indoor unit is displaying a PO or a P2 error code, that indicates an inverter module malfunction or high temperature of compressor top or IPM board. This could mean one of two things. Either you have a short on your IPM board or your pressures are too high or too low. First, we're going to check pressures on the unit to make sure they're not too high or too low. Then we're going to check the IPM board. Here I have unplugged the compressor from the main control board. We're going to check resistance values between the three pins, between 1 and 2, 1 and 3, and 2 and 3. Here I have two examples of IPM boards. This one is an IPM fused with the main control board, and generally you'll see this set up on our smaller BTU units. Over here I have an IPM board by itself, and these come 
standalone on our larger BTU units. To check the unit, we're going to locate W, V, U, and P. And with your meter, you're going to check between P to W, P to V, P to U, and make sure all the values are the same. You're going to do the exact same thing if it's a standalone IPM board. You're going to locate W, V, U, and P, and check the points between P to U, P to V, P to W. It doesn't matter where on the board you check, for instance, here as well is U, V, and W. You can check between these points to here as well. If your indoor unit is displaying a P6 error code, that indicates a pressure related issue. What that means is you either have low or high pressures or you have a malfunction in your low or high pressure switches. First, check your pressures to make sure they're normal. If your pressures are normal, check your pressure switches. First, I will locate the high pressure switch indicated by two yellow wires. I will cut the connection going to the board and check for continuity. Then I would locate the high pressure switch indicated with two red wires and then I would repeat the process.